Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, Neighbor crashed into my house and broke through my wall on purpose. I have heard many stories of neighbor disputes turning into year-long arguments, court cases, even someone moving to get away with them. Something like what happened to me though, I never really thought I would share my story with all of you today about how a simple argument about a fence ended up with my neighbor having his car crashed into my house. As I already stated before, this whole thing started over a fence that we shared between both of our houses. Now, this fence was up before either one of us moved there, so it had a bunch of wear and tear at that point. In fact, it was falling apart and going to be a danger the next time a big rainstorm hit, so I decided to be a good neighbor and pay for it to be removed. Now, I just want to clarify when I say it was falling apart, I mean that it was a wooden fence with giant chunks missing, other pieces pointed out at dangerous angles and the entire thing smelling of wood rot. For all of those reasons, I paid out of pocket to have the thing removed. I honestly thought that I was doing the right thing, because it was clear that the fence was put up by whoever lived at my house before me. Those who don't know, with classic wooden fences there is wood that runs along the back and that is considered the uglier side and ends up being on the side of whoever put up the fence. It was on mine, so with the house I inherited the responsibility for that fence in a way. Anyway, I honestly did not want to put up another fence because there really was not that much of a need for it. Both of us have shrubs on that side of the land making for enough of a barrier on its own. Plus, I just did not have the funds off hand to pay to rebuild it. Fences were not mandatory and many houses around here don't use them. It actually was not even in my mind until neighbor came up to me a few days later, extremely angry. Neighbor, what the hell did you do to my fence? Me, your fence? The one between our houses? Neighbor, of course that fence, you had no right to take it down without asking me first. Me? Well, it was falling apart and technically it was my responsibility, so I took it down before it could go flying off into pieces during the next storm. I thought that was going to be the end of that, but then he hit me with this line. Neighbor, so when are you putting up a new one? Me? Oh, well, I actually didn't plan to. The shrubs do plenty and I don't think there needs to be a fence. Neighbor, I want a fence though, and since you got rid of the last one, that makes you responsible for putting up the new one. Actually it doesn't, you are more than free to put up a fence there, I won't try to stop it being built, but I'm not going to spend money to put up a fence that I don't think is needed. Neighbor, so when are you going to give me the money to replace it? This went in circles for a while, so I will spare you that and get on to the next part of the story. That interaction resulted in weeks of him trying to tell me to replace the fence and lying about all sorts of rules that said I had to. Again, a barrier of shrugs is more than acceptable for a barrier where I live and nobody is forced to put up a fence. If he wanted it, then he was going to have to pay for it himself. Then he tried to be sneaky about it and one day I got a knock on my door from workers claiming that I hired them to put up a fence and they needed half the money down before they started to go and buy the supplies. I explained to them that I did not call and I knew that my neighbor was trying to be tricky. He probably hoped they would build the fence and then harass me until I paid them for the work I never hired them for. Plus, I secretly think he wanted it to be my fence so I would have the uglier side of it again. Which honestly did not matter to me and if he paid for it I would have agreed to let him. I cannot see much of the fence behind my plans, I guess he was extremely mad that his plan did not work so instead he decided to go all the way to the extreme. I was cooking some dinner in the kitchen when I hear a smash and go running to the other side of my house. Neighbor is in his car and has smashed right through my side wall and is smiling even though he is bleeding. It was clear he did this on purpose as he had to go through the shrubs and both our lawns to hit it. I called the police immediately and he was arrested on the spot as the evidence was literally right there. My daughter had been in her room which was only about 10 feet away from where the car crashed. 
I could not believe what he had done and I did not even need to give a statement to the police because it turns out he admitted to everything. He claimed that he was trying to prove that we needed a fence so he smashed his car through my wall on purpose. He was arrested on criminal charges but I also took him to civil court to get money to fix my house. It turns out that neighbor was fairly wealthy and honestly a fence would have been a drop in the bucket for him. Instead, he ended up needing to give me money for emotional damages for me to stay somewhere while my house was being fixed and to pay for the small amount that my house insurance was not going to cover. I just still cannot get over how far this guy was willing to go to try and get me to pay for a fence that I did not want or need. If it was required, I would have found a way to get one, but again, it wasn't. I am mainly glad that he is not living next door to me and my family anymore because a guy like that can be unpredictable. I heard that he was actually in jail once before but I could not get any details on that. When the police came to arrest him though they seemed to recognize him. I still don't have a fence by the way and managed to replant the shrubs that he destroyed to create a beautiful natural barrier between the two properties that I hope will last a long time. And yeah, ripe stars, I'm curious, have you ever had any serious conflicts with your neighbors? And if so, what happened? Please feel free to share your own stories either on r slash ripe stories on reddit or directly here in the comments. And while you're at it, I would really appreciate it if you could post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance. The next one is titled Revenge on Scam Caller. Like most people, my wife and I get spam callers. Admittedly, we don't often get them, but when we do, we just hang up on them until today. My wife starts getting spam calls from the same company and we know they are spam as they always ask for her using her maiden name, not my surname. So she says, I will just get her for you, before handing the phone to me, telling me to do my thing. Me with a very obvious, I'm just messing with you, old woman's voice. Oh, hello, I am wife's first and maiden name, spammer. Hello, yes, I would like to talk to you about life insurance. Me, life insurance? Oh, well, you see, I am old. I don't have much of a life these days. I'm 93 years old. Spammer, even more reason to get it, to protect your family. Me, well, as it happens, I don't have any life at all. I died three weeks ago. Spammer, you died three weeks ago? Me, yes, I died three weeks ago. Poor old heart just gave out. The funeral is next Tuesday if you want to go. At the crematorium on Tarworks Road. Spammer, no thank you. Sorry to hear you died and sorry to disturb you. Goodbye. And thankfully, we never heard from them again. If we want life insurance or whatever it is you are selling, we will call you. The next one is titled 15 years of knowledge. A while ago I worked at a baseball store called Walmart or a general goods store that sounded like that not so long after the great recession of 2008 and management was trying to cut costs because of falling profit. One of the first things management did was fire two of the three full-time maintenance cleaning guys. The one guy they kept, I will call him MG for maintenance guy, was amazing at his job. Everything in the store ran well because of him and his willingness to go beyond what was required to help people. A genuinely nice guy. For six months management tried to make having one third of a maintenance staff work and it failed miserably. MG could not do everything and over time management increasingly asked him to coordinate. Some part-timers that were supposed to do the cleaning and carts, he spent so much time coordinating that he had no time for maintenance. The night crew was also cut so they could not pick up the slack. Then two things happened within the space of a week that told management how important he was to the store running well. First, some cleaning machines broke down. It turns out they have to be properly cleaned weekly. If left alone, they gum up real bad and parts wear out quickly. A several thousand dollar repair bill because he was told to prioritize coordinating part-timers over tinkering with machines. A few days later the deli lady nearly quit after the blade on the deli slicer went flying off and could have cut her face badly. Turns out that the bolt that held it in place was loose and MG had tightened it weekly for her. When he didn't have time to do that anymore, he told management it had to be replaced for safety. But well, management didn't do that because it cost money, but they told people it was fixed. That could have been a lawsuit or criminal charges, they and Delhi Lady got lucky. 
So, management sat down with him and asked him why things were going wrong. MG told them point blank he needed enough time for maintenance and someone else had to coordinate the part-time cleaners and check up on them. They were rather lazy. Management called BS, they said maintenance should be easy and done quickly, MG got mad because that insulted his professionalism and he pulled out his notebook from his back pocket. It turns out that over his 15 years he had filled the book with charts, schedules and diagrams of how to do his job and keep things running. There were over 100 things he checked weekly or monthly, there were a lot of machines he kept in running order, some had certain things that were half broken and had to be wiggled in a certain way etc. To be honest, a lot of these things were minor or major safety hazards, but over the years management was fine with not replacing multi-thousand dollar machines if MG knew how to keep them working. As well, he did things that he should not have done, like calibrating machines for departments that should have done it themselves or contracted it out etc, but he was a nice guy and he liked helping people. He told me that he spent about a half hour telling management about what he did and he suspected that until then nobody had ever known about how much he did. Well, he may have said a few swear words and derogatory things while telling management why he needed time to do stuff, it was not a good moment for him and he was pissed. At the end, he put his notebook back in his pocket and offered to take a week to write up everything he knew so that management could have written proof of why this job mattered in case a higher up asked why they increased maintenance costs when corporate was demanding they cut costs. The multiple managers in the room looked at each other and asked him to leave so they could talk in private. Private. He told me several years later when I ran into him somewhere and had lunch with him that he had a premonition as he walked out of the room so he went to the back room and tossed his notebook in the garbage compactor. For good measure he then went around the store and emptied all the garbage cans and tossed those bags in so his notebook was properly buried. He was fine with it, all that information was in his head. After a few minutes later management called him back. They told him that they could not allow him to keep working there because of the level of insubordination he had showed. They said as soon as he surrendered his badge, box cutters and notebook he would be escorted out of the building by security, they basically treated him like a criminal most fired people are not escorted out unless they were suspected of committing a crime that could not be proved. He handed over his badge and box cutter, they asked for the notebook. He said he threw it in the compactor, their eyes went white and they asked him why he threw it out. He said he thought he was going to write everything up nicely on the computer from memory, so he thought he was done with the notebook. At this point management starts looking at each other worried, because they had intended to take his book, fire him and have a less subordinate part-timer, who doesn't get expensive benefits like a full-timer, do his job. And now they couldn't. One of the managers suggested that he be allowed to write up the info before being escorted out. The others agreed. He was given the chance to be unfired just long enough to give them the info. How kind. He laughed and walked out, head held high and management followed him to his car to make sure he left. I don't have the exact numbers but I guesstimate the store had to spend at least 20 or 30 thousand bucks to replace stuff that MG had kept working beyond the equipment's lifespan and the new guy they hired had a hell of a time figuring out how things worked. To be honest, in a few cases MG had gone too far, like creating fire hazards by taping broken chargers together after rewiring them instead of tossing them, but management had never complained when he saved them money. There was also a lot of things that should have been done by the health and safety team or the departments but they also never complained about having less work. I asked him if throwing out that notebook was illegal but he said it was personal property to help him remember things. It was not a work provided notebook. He was proud of what he did, his pride clearly showed in how he told the story. He said that nobody is allowed to question his professional judgment by implying he is lazy. I agree. Edit, after reading the comments I will say a few things to clarify some things. It might be too late for that, but I don't check reddit while I sleep. First, I came in the day after the deli machine incident, I was hearing things and I asked someone what happened. I was told that the machine malfunctioned while deli lady was using it and she freaked out and refused to come in. She took a few days off to calm her nerves. Over the course of the next few days I heard multiple versions of the story. Some involving the blade coming off, some not and one that involved the blade getting lodged in the ceiling. 
Did I pick an interesting version of it to retell? Yes. The problem with telling someone else's story is it keeps getting better every time it is told. So if you see people commenting that deli machines don't work that way, they are probably right. Number two, I mentioned that this happened during slash soon after the Great Recession, which is important. According to people there, management used to readily approve replacing damaged equipment. It was after the recession they stopped doing that and relied on MG's temporary fixes. A lot of what he did was not supposed to last. He was really pissed at the end because multiple times management had refused to replace stuff that was obviously broken and at times management had told them they would replace something and then change their minds without telling him. That is why he really snapped at the end. Number 3. Some people have pointed out that replacing 20k of machinery is cheaper than paying a guy for 15 years. That is technically true, but stuff does not stop breaking down or stop needing to be cleaned just because someone was fired. The store had to replace him anyhow, so firing him did not save money. As well, that 20k or so of replacement should have happened over 4-5 fiscal years, not all at once. Chances are, some manager kept getting good annual reviews for keeping capital spending down, not realizing that he was just postponing the inevitable. Final edit, I don't know what exactly was in the book, but I can speculate. Yes, it was probably a lot of scribbles that could not be easily deciphered, and yes, in the long run he was easily replaceable and the incident is a blip on profit. The one major thing management probably really wanted was the list of what machines needed to be watched and tinkered. The couple weeks or so after he left were really bad because people were afraid to use stuff because of crazy stories circulating about Delhi Lady. See above. But within two months things were humming along fine. However, this is not a subreddit about proper management or profitability, it is about revenge and he got his revenge. And the next one is titled, write me up for simple mistakes to get me fired? Prepare to get fired. I told someone this story and they directed me here to long didn't read at the bottom. Anyways, private security was my field up until a few years ago. When I say security, I don't mean mall cops, but high-end armed trained security. I spent a few years working a job in another city, away from home, but the company went under, so I decided to move back home. I found a security job online, it was simple, entry level, basically sitting behind a computer, you were security for the building, but monitored security for other sites the company owned across three states, like small repair places, factories, places where they stored vehicles, etc. So I submitted my resume, the next day a guy calls and sets up an interview, awesome, because I needed to find work fast. Went to the interview, conducted by a woman I will call Jane, she was the supervisor and the guy I talked to was her boss. Jane immediately told me I was way overqualified, which I found strange, but okay. Interview went fine and I left. A few hours later she called and said I was hired and set up training days. Now I won't go through that, just wanted to give background, so let's go to the good parts. She always gave me a cold shoulder, her boss found out that I have all the qualifications, licensing and training to be armed, so he had me come in armed. Nothing fancy, handgun, three magazines and handcuffs, she would always make comments about how everyone should be armed, a few of my co-workers I wouldn't trust with a water gun and she should decide who is armed. Just little comments to get under my skin and then one day it happened. I was working the front desk slash reception that day and she sends me a message over messenger telling me she needs to see me. I go back, she drags me to a side office with a write up form. Apparently when I added door access to visitors batch I added the door to the gym in the basement, a mistake but not life threatening, a week later I didn't sign my timesheet, another for not filling a form correctly, all minor things everyone has done or did. The end came about 9 months into the job, when I looked at the new timesheet I was paired with a new officer who had been there a month, only he was listed as shift supervisor. Confused I took it to her second in command, I will call H.I. Bob, a great guy. He told me that he brought it up, that I had the experience and seniority to be promoted and she basically told him to F off, it was her choice. 
Anyways, that got me mad, so I started planning my revenge. I don't normally do this, but I knew one more right up I would be fired no matter how minor the infraction was. Good thing is during the night shift there's only two people and we cannot see each other's computers. So I started thinking. I remembered about four months prior her car broke down in the parking lot across the street. Instead of having it towed, Jane's father decided to fix it there. No big deal, only during that time Jane was bringing her husband back into the security office. This was a huge deal, the office took scanning at three doors and a keypad to enter. In the whole building, only the security staff and one cleaning guy had access. It was the HQ for the company and not even the executives had access. From our computers we could open any door, turn off any camera or alarm and open any gate in any building that the company owned. So it was a big deal because we had the keys to the kingdom, that was a huge effing violation, so I hatched my plan. Under the excuse of having a smoke, I went out to reception and copied the visitor log from those days. I then went back in and accessed the video feeds, you could go back a year for all video feeds and took screenshots of her husband in turning the doors and office, the office itself had no camera as well as with timestamps him leaving and the fact he never swiped in, which following someone into a door, even if they hold it open, you must scan your card. I logged onto my private email and sent it to another email knowing they don't log what you do on computers. I got home and sent all the pictures, the log copies and everything to not only her boss, but his boss whose job was investigating breaches and theft. I also included every dirty trick she pulled playing favoritisms etc. The fallout didn't take long, two days later, on a Friday, I went in for the afternoon shift and Bob was at Jane's workstation. I looked confused and said Jane was suspended for a week and that Monday I had to come in and speak with her boss and boss's boss, but I would be paid for it. Also everyone was interviewed, it was great rumors were flying, I was laughing on the inside. So okay, interview day. I go in and they started questioning me, they knew I worked while she brought her husband in and asked me. I spilled everything after acting scared and getting assurances it would be confidential and I won't be punished. I didn't tell them I sent it, but they asked everyone. I left out some things in the email and added some things that weren't. I didn't want to be labeled as a snitch, it went on for an hour and I left. Next day an email is waiting, Jane was fired, Bob was in charge until a replacement is added. I had a long talk with Bob that day, turns out Jane was scared of me because I was more qualified for her job than she was and knew I was her boss's golden boy. She was afraid, rightfully so it turned out, that I might take her job and admitted to him she wanted me gone, a fact he told them in his interview. Also that she didn't want to hire me but her boss made her. Turns out her boss was aware of things and looking for an excuse to fire her but it had to be big. Jane had been working at that department for 10 years, it was her first real job and security was all she knew, they blacklisted her which means unless a company was really desperate, she wouldn't get a security job anywhere in the state, icing on the cake. I know you want to know, yes I was offered her job, no I didn't take it. I told them that Bob deserved it more, he did and that I would be happy being a shift supervisor. So that is what I stayed for the next two years until I left. Thanks for sticking with me. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications, which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore, if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube, then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe youtube for more than 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.